Ah, you know it's hot outside when like those locusts or cicadas just make noise. <laughs> What's up guys? Uh, today I'm gonna, um, I'm jumping on the pit bike here real quick. Uh, I gotta clean my driveway too. It's got little spots all over the place from those pit bikes. Just maintenance and all that stuff. Ignore that yellow wire, it's the headlight. I gotta wire that later. Um, Um, today I'm going to, are you dead? No way. Oh, he's off. There we go. Choke. Um, I got a 93 LT1, uh, engine, uh, laying in a, uh, in the garage right there. I might put it in the mongoose. I got two. Actually, I've got two engines right now. I've got one that was like fresh, but it had like a little rust in the cylinders and I honed it and you can't feel it anymore, but you can still see like a stain. I'm not sure if that's gonna affect anything or not. Um, but um, I got that 93 and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it apart. So this video is gonna be taking apart an LT1 engine on a stand. Uh, what to look for, how to do everything, what size bolts, all that stuff. Know, all any tips or tricks I got so it's a fresh it's a long block so it, I've never cracked it open it looks like it's a, an original engine so it still has the original spark plugs in it and wires and all that stuff so never been touched are you good now nope you're not good okay this thing's cold bloated uh, it helped with the gas was on too oh come on bro it's gone, it's too hot for this. Choke. Oh yeah, there we go. Anyway, uh, I'm just I'm warming up the pit bike right now to run to the post office. And I got a bunch of stickers to mail. I've almost sold out of them. So I live like a mile away from the, the post office. Nobody says said anything about my pit bike. I don't really care as long as it's like 30 miles an hour anyway. So we're gonna see if we can do this without crashing here. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, we're good. So yeah, I'm gonna... I should do, I should do moto vlogs on this thing around my neighborhood. <laughs> so we're, uh... This thing's pretty awesome, actually. I love this little thing. So I'm gonna fix the, the front brake. I'm missing the cable here. I've only got a rear brake and a little cell phone holder right there to show my mom. Man, I, got, I wired up a headlight for it. So uh, that's gonna, I'm waiting on the switch for the headlight. That's it. That's all I'm waiting on. And then I can have a, uh, uh, a headlight. Um, it's got an electric start on it. It's a little 70cc Suzuki. Man, I love this little thing. It's awesome. It's got little street tires and stuff on it. So but yeah, I'm uh, just headed to the post office right now. I'm gonna drop off all these letters stickers and stuff so really appreciate the support and everything um hell i'm making uh nothing on the stickers i just just do it just to do it so i mean if you include the, the price of a stamp you know the envelope and everything I'm, I'm probably breaking even so it's fine with me i don't i don't do it for money i just do it just because it's cool i guess i just i, I dig it stickers worldwide. seatbelt sometimes either. <laughs> Sue me. I just hate my neighborhood. I know I could die in my neighborhood. It's a pretty cool looking truck. It's, it's like a it's like an old school theme. I don't know. Right. Great. I'm gonna restart the sucker. Yeah, go in there. 
Sorry, sorry if it bent. Wildberry's pretty good. That's that's not bad. <laughs> that's that's damn good monster right there, buddy. Getting the fan out here. Well, AC unit just sits in there. The, I made a yeah. I'll just rig it up in there for now. A little smudge on the thing. Oh, is it still smudged? No. Okay, good. Yeah. So it's a. Uh, at least it's it's cooler in here than it is outside. So I got this fan here. Circulates air, so that's good. So yeah, let me go take these off. Let me grab some tools and stuff, get everything set up. Um, I'm just gonna do it here in the uh, in the garage. I'm not gonna go outside. It's stupid hot outside. Um, yeah, let me get all set up and everything and uh, see you over there. Okay. Um, I don't know anything about this engine. Um, I got it in a trade. Um, I had uh, I tuned a C6 bet for it. So uh, it came with the PCM, the wiring harness. Uh, everything you see right here just came with the PCM and wiring harness too. Uh, it's a 93 model. It's an F body one. I know it's not a vet one. Um, so I figured I can take what I want off of it, which is just, I just want the long block. I don't care about anything else really. I have a ton of this stuff. Uh, I, don't, I don't own a 93, so I, I have no use for the throttle body or the, the computer, the wiring harness, the intake manifold, the, the uh, uh, fuel rails, all that stuff. These are all specific right here to a 93. So I'm just gonna sell them. I, I, don't, I don't need these things. Um, I think the exhaust manifolds are specific to a 93 as well too. These look way different for the air pump than a typical 94 and up one. So, um, 
Let me gather my tools real quick and I'll tell you what you need to take this thing apart. All right, so you're gonna need a couple things. Um, and I've, uh, did I grab it? I forgot my eight millimeter. Anyway, you're gonna need eight millimeter too. So quarter inch ratchet, need that. Uh, need a, uh, a three eighths. Oh, no, I got my eight millimeter right here. Boom. Okay, so you need an eight. Um, for the fuel rails and this one's a 10. So on a typical uh, 94 and up one, you're gonna need uh, an eight millimeter to take off the fuel rails. Uh, but it does go on the map sensor one, so you'll need it anyway. So I'm pretty sure it's a 10 for the fuel rails. Yep. Or three eighths, I think a three eighths will work too. So I have a three eighths right here. No, a three eighths will not work, but a three eighths does, uh, is needed for the valve covers. So everybody mistakes these for a 10 mil. They're three eighths, need that. Uh, the crank uh, bolts up here, you need 16 millimeter, uh, all, all four of them. Um, it's good to have an impact uh, driver too, those are good. You need a 14 mil to take off the, uh, the uh, intake manifold bolts themselves. Uh, 10 millimeter up here, a couple extensions, just random things like that. It's good to have an electric ratchet. I, this thing makes things so much faster with this. So let's just jump right into it. I'm gonna start by just taking off the throttle body. And if you're wanting to keep all these bolts, just label them. Get a, get a bag of Ziploc bags or a box of them. Start labeling them. It's kind of self-explanatory though once you start taking apart a bunch of them. That four of them, they come out pretty easy usually. Boom. Got a couple of hoses here. I usually rip these hoses. I don't care about these things. Like they're, you know, they're 25 years old now, so they, it doesn't really matter. I'm not reusing these hoses. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll use a good, like a decent one. So uh, you've got your coolant bypass hoses right here. I bypass. I just take those off anyway and bypass it. A couple of uh, vacuum lines. The 93 ones, they're different. They have a different IAC on them, so. This one is specific to a 93, and I think this bracket right here is way different too. It goes for that 700R transmission they have, or 4L60 non-E, so. All right, there's that. Yeah, get the water pump off, it's pretty easy too. This is, uh, it's six 14 millimeter bolts. That's all it is. You might need a wobble to get one of them but for the most part, you can probably just get most of them like this. So what I like to do is just break them loose first. And I try not to break my electric ratchet. If it seems like it's too much for this thing, uh, and we'll get this ICM off real quick. That's gonna be a 15. So I might change that bolt, and that's a 15 as well. All right, cool. There we go. That's a little too much for it. So I'm gonna go grab my ratchet real quick. Okay, I grabbed a 15 too for this. Actually, it's not. I see one's just in the way. Okay, I'll figure that one out. I've never seen one like that before. Maybe it's a specific bracket. I, I don't. I don't mess with a lot of 93s. So, oh great, coolant. Yeah, watch out for residual coolant. It's nice. Ugh, yucky. Okay. 14. That's probably the original one. I'm, it looks like the thermostat's been changed before, so. Man, that thing's in there. You got one hidden down here. Ah, usually these are not that hard, so. This one's got some junk in the threads or something. Or... Now I'll tend to keep sensors and stuff like the coolant temp and just things like that that I can I can use. I ain't going to the store and buying a twenty dollar sensor when I've got one right here. So I'll change five of them up before I even go to the parts store. Jeez, oh, that one came out. Yeah, I gotta get these off now. Changing the thermostat in these is actually pretty easy too. I. Uh, I'll, I recommend everybody just put a 160 in it. 
it's not going to run 160 it's going to run around 180 to 190. these things are reverse cooled everybody every every one of those old school guys is, oh they're meant they're meant to run 240 degrees it's totally normal no it's not that's why they had head gasket issues they did it because of emissions they did it to burn off all the residual oil and all that stuff they were they were trying to make them run as hot as possible to pass emissions that's what they were doing so this one's got two different size bolts you get a short one just kind of be mindful where they go you can kind of see when you set the water pump up it's got it's got a long tab right here and it's got a little short one right there so that's where the short one goes and that's where the long one goes get to this other side here you know what? I'm going to try a 916s. I'm going to grab a 916s. Okay, 916 seems to fit this one better. Usually they're 14s. So that's probably what the problem was. Okay. Let's bust these loose with 916s. So I guess maybe 93 916s on the water pump bolts. I'm not sure. Again, I've used 14s without issue and it's never 80 socket like it just did so it might be a little different head or something there ain't no telling it's kind of the transition period between standard and metric stuff you know it doesn't matter to me as long as it fits kind of used to it with these old gms so this one's a little tricky <clears throat> so the one that sits behind the water uh the uh, power steering pump pulley uh you probably need a short socket and a wobble Usually that does the trick. So I'm gonna grab one here in a second after this. Crack this one loose. God. Goodness. All right, got my wobble, my shorty. Stick it in there. Looks like a charm right there. Oh yeah, okay. cool. You got him. And then again, same thing. You got two long ones and a short one. It's the same pattern on this side. Two longs and a short. All right, to get this thing off, um, usually a long screwdriver or an extension or something. Just kind of wiggle it like this. If you plan on reusing this thing, be mindful of like, there's these pins that kind of hold it on. It. And it comes off just like that. It's easy. Original off the. Let me get the toes off here. Don't spill coolant. Good deal. And I mean, look, we got a water pump right there. I don't think those are specific to a, a 93. It looks like it looks like a 94 and up style or whatever. So I don't I don't know if they're all different. I know the B body ones are different. So we got the Oppie harness right here. Let's unplug that. And then you can see your Oppie now. So what we need to do is we need to get this little sleeve off right here. It goes to the water pump. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers and kind of wiggle it. And that drive I was talking about is actually sitting behind this. So to get all this off, we're gonna need to take the, the uh, crank pulley off and then the, uh, the hub assembly. So the hub assembly looks like this i think this is a 97 one right here so that pulley sits on this right here and bolts up to it and it only goes a certain way pretty nifty little design and then you can get your opti off which is a couple of 10 millimeter bolts so let's uh let's start getting that stuff off so i've got a three jaw harmonic just a puller a three jaw puller uh, a half inch ratchet and then this one takes a five eighths right here um I am missing, oh, one of the most important parts. All right, so I use one of these three drop pullers. Um, you're gonna wanna put anti-seize on these threads. Like you're gonna gall them up if you don't. So I just use some Permatex copper anti-seize. I use this on O2 sensors and everything, works great. Definitely put it on this because you're, I've, I've messed up one of these before. This will save your behind here. So put a little bit on there and kind of run it through a couple times and then we're gonna set this thing up. Let's get 
going through there. Oh yeah, we're good. All right, so back it out. The most important part I was mentioning is a little quarter inch um, extension that you don't care about. This one, unfortunately, was a uh, snap-on one and it's ruined. So, thanks snap-on. <laughs> it ain't your fault, it's my fault. So, what you're gonna do, can you see that? Oh yeah, you can see that. So, stick it right in there, like that. And you're gonna push against the back of the uh, crankshaft here, on there. So, since we've got a, uh, I haven't done one of these like this in a while. Since you got a pulley on there, I'm gonna grab it like that. And then, instead of getting a wrench and squeezing these together, I'm just gonna whack it. <laughs> whack them closed there. And this is probably just gonna pull the pulley off, which is fine with me, I don't really care. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna stick those uh, 316 millimeter bolts back in there and it's gonna pull them off. That's gonna pull the whole thing off as one assembly. So let's do that, so I don't have to do this twice. Put those on there. And I'm not even gonna tighten them, I'm just gonna hand tighten them all the way down here. All right. I'm just gonna line this thing up now. Up, and you're gonna get anti seize on you, just like I am. Oh, come on now. I don't know why the camera stopped recording, it just beeped at me and said towering off. So, I lost footage. Sorry, are you gonna go on there? And you just got to finagle it a couple of times. You might have to rotate it. There it is, right there. Just like I just did. I had to, to rotate it here, get it all lined up. Boom. All right. Here, I'll get you a closer look here. It's gonna look like that. So you got the ears right here. I just had to rotate it around since it's it's not perfectly around like it's it's a certain way. So what you're gonna do is put that extension in here. You're gonna push against the back of that crankshaft hole right here so you don't ruin the threads on your crankshaft. And it's gonna turn this out slow right here and it's gonna do its job. Oh, the camera keeps shutting off temperature it's it's really not that hot in here it, it might be 85. i mean it's like 100 and something outside but anyway i'm gonna try to record this real quick before it shuts off again can we see this oh yeah we can see this okay so i'm gonna get my uh half inch ratchet wherever i put this thing at okay. right chill five eighths and what you're gonna do is just go slow with it so just tighten it up and you'll see you'll see it move here and the world just pop out like it just did, so that's nice. Yeah, it on. <laughs> oh yeah, it's pulled up now. And it might turn the engine, which is fine. And you'll hear it start creaking. Just you'll feel it too so it's coming off right now good deal and you just want to go to a steady pace you don't want to go too fast you don't want to put an impact on it you're going to gobble those threads up like i said on your tool and you'll be buying another tool you can get one of those at advanced auto that's where i get all my stuff at so or any parts store uh just a three jaw puller i think this one's 30 bucks so well worth your investment if you're gonna be messing with these lt ones a lot what I do, it's a must have. And at the end, it'll come right off. And on these uh, 92 through 95s, there you go. There's no keyway, so it's fine. Mmm, oil. I like, the, I like the smell of an old engine. They have a certain smell to them too. I know it's weird, but they do. Anyway, I set the whole thing to the side. Now you can access your Opti here. So let me get all this set up right here and uh, we'll start taking the Opti off. All right. So you got three bolts here on the Opti that holds it on. You got one right here, one right here, and one right there. They're all 10 mils. Just bust those off real quick. Now let's do it one-handed real quick. How about the 
That's a ratchet, one handed. Boom. Okay, those all come out. And these are part of the timing cover too, so they're a little longer than the regular timing cover bolts here, so just be mindful of that too. And your LP comes right off. So 92 to 94 look like this right here. You got this little drive too. There's your oil seal, crankshaft seal, and then your water pump seal right here. Timing cover. So this one's an original oppie. I already know that. This thing will lock them out. All right, let me get a pry bar. All right. I'm gonna mess with the exhaust uh, manifold here. Nine sixteenths. I'm just gonna use an impact. I haven't soaked these or anything. Now, I've also never had one of these break off. I've had LS ones break off. Oh yeah, we'll come right out with that. LT1 for the win. Yeah, it comes right out. There we go. That one's being a little booger, I think. Maybe not. I don't save any of those bolts either. I have to throw those away. Certain bolts I will keep. Okay, now that one's out. The front one is broke off in there, so somebody had uh, bad luck with that one. Let's see if I can get this one out. Oh yeah, came right out, and she's off. There you go. I don't really care about these, so I'm just using an impact on the <laughs> spark plugs. Look at that. Hey, they look, all look even and good. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah, all that looks good. I'll probably contact Lloyd, ask him if he needs some cores. I usually, I usually just sell my heads to him. Uh, you know, he he pays X amount for them. They're, he just uses them as cores. Um, I just figure out to help out somebody in the community. You know, I don't, I don't need them. I don't care about them. Uh, they're just gonna sit around here anyway. So whatever, just like everything else. <laughs> so let's get these valve covers off real quick. Valve covers, I don't care about them. I don't know. There's a million of them, man. There we go. This is the original one, too. Like all these vacuum lines, I don't care about any of these vacuum lines. This is junk. It just goes in the trash bin immediately. This is a clean, low mileage engine. So, I can already tell we're probably gonna use this one. It ain't moist up here. <laughs> moist. Uh, but um, it does look good. So let me get a let me get my flashlight here. Oh yeah. Ooh, we got dirt inside there too. That's nice. It probably just fell from there. So. All right. Sweet. Let me uh, let me get set up to take off this intake manifold right here. We're gonna look in that valley. I bet you it looks just like this. But you, just, you can you can tell this is a low mileage engine just because of that. Like. Not a lot of sludge, just a little varnish, like nothing crazy. It looks, that looks pretty good to me. That does not look bad. Um, I've got a couple of them here, so excuse all the junk. I have junk everywhere in here. So these are all LT ones. Um, yeah, let me get this uh, intake manifold off right here. I got the, uh, got the fuel rail bolts out. I've never seen any this big, but again, I've never really messed with a 93 in person before. So this is a first for me. So. I'm gonna keep these. These uh, actually might be useful for somebody. They're not useful for me because I don't own one. Uh, so I'm gonna put these aside here. And then a little trick I'll do with these, uh, well, on a 94, I usually pry up on this little 
this little piece right here is, goes across right here. I usually pry up on them with a pry bar. And since I don't, I don't care about these injectors. Like they're, 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 they're 20 something years old. I'm, I'm good. So I've got stuff flying already. They're already breaking. Like I don't care about these things. Fuel rails I do. I'll, you know, somebody needs some fuel rails, but somebody asked me about these used injectors. Nah, <laughs> I would not run these at all, man. You're asking for trouble, which you really are. Now, obviously, pulling this stuff off in the car is going to be different. You're probably going to have to mess around with it a little bit. But it's not going to hurt to pry up on them a little bit. So just don't don't force them, you know. I'm not for. I'm not even. I'm just doing this one-handed, so. And then, I've never taken one of these off. Okay, I'm going to. Is this bolted down right here, this junk? Another another info, uh, bit of information, too, is uh, I want to vacuum all this stuff out. Don't do like I did. Just, start taking stuff apart so I think it's bolted down right here with this bolt so let me get in here real quick and find out what bolt this is all right working on all this um, I got all these bolts out right here there's a couple of a uh, couple of nuts you take off of these brackets and then there's the bolts under them they're all uh, 916s uh, to get this back one out right here uh, you're gonna need to take this EGR off um, I just I just take it off anyway um, you can get to it with a you know a regular old wrench but and just, just take off look it's easy and now if you want to and if you're doing this in the car yeah you can totally slide this out you might hit this once you get towards the top of these threads that's just a a warning for you so you just bust these two loose right here they're half inch i think they're half inch on the uh 94 to 97 cars too let me just take these out real quick. And then this thing will slide right out. Just like that. Use the back of the EGR and stuff. The uh, Now the oil pressure sensor on these is a little different. The block's the same, but on the, uh, on the, the 94 and up cars, the oil pressure sensor is right here. On this one, it's down here. I don't think that makes a like a real big difference because I know on the 94 and up cars, this has got an MPT fitting in it, just like that. So uh, now that we get access to this, we can just bust this side off right here, and then we gotta get this side right here. Uh, so let me look at this nut out right here, or this bolt right here out, and look at this intake manifold off. All right, I know this engine hadn't run in a long time. It's dry up here. Usually you'll see some uh, oil or something up here, but it's just dry. Um, still not a bad thing. Um, I know it's an original non-rebuilt engine. Like it still had the original China walls, uh, silicone on it. It still had the original gaskets and everything. So it's, this intake's never been off of it. All the ports look real good, so it's, it's pretty clean in there. You can tell this thing. This is probably the one I'm gonna run. I don't, I don't, I don't trust rebuilds that I don't know anything about. So I'll show you what I, I, I have on this rebuilt one right here. I know it's got new bearings and stuff in it. Like the whole block looks good, but I don't trust it. Like I just don't. Um, I'd rather run an old used ass engine. So, uh, but yeah, you can see right here, where I'm pointing at, a little dark spot. That's where rust was. And it's been sitting. There's a couple of cylinders like that, and it turns over now. When I when I got it, it didn't turn over. It was actually it would stop right at that point right there. And uh, so I kind of worked it a little bit, and then I busted it loose with a hone, and uh, it does rotations now. Again, everything looks good. It's got brand new freeze plugs and everything in it. It's got brand new cam bearings. I, it, I just don't, I don't trust it. I'd rather, I, I trust this one right here. So what I'm gonna do before I make my final decision to do the Trans Am engine, uh, I'm gonna take this, this one apart right here. I'm gonna have a look at the bearings. Cause that one that's in there right now, I didn't, I did not take, a, take it apart and look at the bearings and I paid for it and it's fun bearing. Uh, I think that engine was already hurt before we even put it in there. So I'm gonna make damn sure that this one ain't hurt. And 
and go from there. So I'm gonna finish up, I'm gonna take this accessory bracket off. It's not hard either, it's just, um, I'm, I'm gonna do all this stuff off camera. I just figured I'd kind of bust this stuff off just while I was here. Um, I had a guy ask me how to take out this right here, the uh, waterfront drive, so I'll explain that real quick. Uh, so what you're gonna do, if you want, you okay, so to take off this timing cover properly, you're gonna need to loosen up that oil pan and drop it. Or you can do like I do and just rip it, because I'm gonna replace it anyway. So if you're gonna do it like I do, there's a bunch of 10 mils all right here, okay? There's a bunch of them all the way around, all right? And bust all those loose and start prying it up this way. And then you see where the bearing goes in back there? Honestly, what I do is take the round part of my hammer right there and just while this is off <laughs> whack it. it well actually it's bolted in too behind this so i think it's a t it's a torx bit i can't remember it's like a t40 or something like that or t50 i think it's a 40. uh you'll take those out and then you can whack it and this whole thing will come right out so the whole bearing assembly will come out i don't use them because i have an electric water pump and i block off this this uh this hole anyway so uh let me actually let me just get let me just do this and we'll just end the video after that. Uh, let me let me get this off right here and let's just uh, look at the uh, uh, the front timing cover and all that stuff and uh, let's see what we can do. Well, that one's rounded off. I don't know why. Whatever. Okay, I'm I'm done. I'm done for the day. I I'm probably I'm really good, probably just gonna break that. I don't really want the timing cover or anything, but I need to get the timing cover off, uh, or I'll just end up cutting it with a death wheel or something. Uh, the timing cover's worthless to me. It's I think it's worthless to everybody else too. Like nobody uses those things. So anyway, uh, that does it for this one, guys. Uh, Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm gonna rip these heads off. I'll probably post some pictures and stuff on my Facebook page and Instagram. Uh, I'll take the cam out and stuff later. I'm not doing all that stuff right now. It is, it's, it's getting really hot out here right now, even with the AC on. Uh, it's supposed to be like 109 today and I'm just, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go inside, cool off, edit some video and stuff, wash my hands, do all that stuff, probably eat some lunch, sloppy joes or something. Sounds pretty good. And then uh, catch you guys in the next one.